Hi, I'm Ross here with the new Mr. Speaker's Ether Flows. Now, I was lucky enough to be with Dan Clark and a couple of friends at uh, Dan's office when the original Ethers were announced, which I have here. And while I was at the office, I was impressed enough with these that after CanJam SoCal 2015, prior to which they were announced, I took home one of the first production pairs, which I still have. They're unique in that the, these are the only ones that the cups swivel all the way. However, since then he has made a number of improvements to the design and that has become the Ether Flow. So headphones are already liked and were already very impressed with, have now been upgraded and now are even better. But if you're not familiar with the, uh, the Ether Flow, uh, Ethers or the Ether Flows, let me give you an overview. Now compared to say the Odyssey LCDX series, they're considerably lighter and they achieve this in a number of ways. First of all, the drivers have magnets only on one side and not both like a number of Hi-Fi Man and Odyssey headphones. Secondly, uh, one of the guys who works for Dan Clark came up with the idea of using nitinol wire for the headband arcs. Now nitinol wire is the stuff that's used in, in braces, you know, for straightening up your teeth. And it has a unique property in that once it's set in a particular shape, you can really twist it out of shape in, in quite ex strange ways and will go back to its original shape with no issues there. Quite a big change, say, from your Audio-Technica uh, arcs, which you can, you can bend into different shapes as necessary. And the advantage of that is, well, Dan was actually thinking of shipping them originally, you know, twisted out and then put into a tube, but he thought that might be a bit too unnerving for customers. Well, that would have made for a neat way of shipping them. Uh, but it, it means that, say, the headband adjustment is just a, a simple piece of leather upon which it mounted on two slidey, sliding blocks, which can be tightened or loosened as necessary with the screws there. So it's very easy just to kind of plop it on your head and pull them down thus and good to go. And the ear pads are made of high quality leather. He's upped the quality of the leather since the original ethers. And what's more, the cables use a, what's called a Hirose connector. If you've ever had seen the iBasso Balanced Amp series, it uses the same connector. It pops on and off very easily. It has uh, four connectors inside. And you know, you just kind of turn it around to get, the, get it and in position and it just pops straight on. Makes it very easy to change cables and uh, well, there you go. The cups themselves are 3D printed and then spray painted with automotive paint at Dan's office. And well, one of the things you can see, if I grab the original ethers which uh, and the original design, pop off one of the ear pads and give you a close look, you can see, if you look closely, if you have this video on high res, the, the lines of the 3D printing of the, the inner components and the driver screwed in with 14 screws there. So it's all very tight and, and, and very, very tightly screwed together. If you see most headphones, a lot of them only have like four or five screws around the edge, 14 there. So the driver sits behind this perforated metal plate and this perforated metal plate, which is the, the path through which the sound comes, is very important in this case because it's, that's where one of the major upgrades to the Ether Flows has come. Now, uh, if the ether flows, if I pop off one of the cup, one of the pads here, we have a little bit more, a little bit of a difference compared to the original. But if I just pop them, pop this off too, you will see something different, and that is the new waveguide. Now the waveguide is important in this case because it changes the flow, thus the name, uh, of the sound coming to your ears. And it may be a little bit difficult to see unless I uh, show this close up. There are pictures online from, from Mr. Speakers. And you'll see that there's, they have a slight, well, I don't know, I wouldn't say even trumpet shape, but it changes the, the pattern, the, the way the sound moves through from the drivers to prevent, I guess it may be called eddy currents, I'm not entirely sure. Basically kind of uh, the, the way the, the sound moves through. So instead of kind of rotating around, if you see the uh, video from Mr. Speakers, it, it kind of ends up going more straight towards your ears. That improves the set precision of the sound when it hits your ears, and that's something that's quite noticeable. There are also some other internal changes to the design you might have noticed compared to the original uh, new uh, internal design, which uses metal instead of the 3D printed plastic. And so if you do, and Dan has offered, is offering a update available to existing customers so that they can have a pair of flows without having to buy an entirely new pair. Although if you live overseas, you know, shipping might be a bit prohibitive in that. So that leads us on to the sound. Now the original Ether C's compared to say the Odyssey LCD X's had a somewhat of a brighter overall sound. That is the, the bass was kind of uh, uh, brighter or lighter sounding. The mid range was a bit brighter and the treble was brighter. But that being said, Dan worked very hard to get the treble on these to be excellent. 
And one of the updates I gather, the 1.1 update, which in, consisted of putting uh, an insert that you put just inside the pads here, improved that even a little bit even, even still. All the same, there are a couple of issues I didn't like about the original ethers. And the first of those is that the deep bass rumble seemed to be a little bit missing in, the, in uh, the presentation. And it wasn't a big issue on many tracks, but it was on some. Second thing is I found the mid bass to be just a bit strong. So while overall I enjoyed listening with these most of the time, a couple of times I kind of felt almost there in their design. However, with the flow update, all that has been rectified. That deep bass rumble, which seemed to be not quite there with the ethers, now is there, very present in the ether flows. The mid bass, while still quite, quite a bit, maybe a little bit above neutral, it being much more precise from the, the flow waveguides inside and in front, of, in front of the driver, is much more pleasing. And that flow upgrade has also improved the mid range and the treble, making everything much more precise without losing the delicious uh, uh, presentation and very realistic presentation of instruments. So the kind of no, like the original ethers were kind of like 95% there, and now I feel like it's the the ether flows were kind of sitting sitting on 100%. I mean, I felt the original ethers were kind of almost electrostat like in their presentation. I say almost because I gave up my stat rig, thinking that eventually planers will catch up. And every time I got a pair, you'd be whether it be the ethers or it be the uh, Hi-Fi Men's HT1000 or what have you, I kind of felt like almost, almost, almost not quite there. But with the ether flows, it seems to have pushed it up to that, that level which I'd like to compare these to the Stax SR009s. And the great thing is, they still drive out of anything. They'll drive out of a phone. They pair up really nicely with something like a Chord Mojo. They'll drive out of a high-end rig and you'll get the, the benefits of it. That kind of, the, the brighter but very clean treble tended to reveal the quality of upstream sources very clearly. And if the original ethers did that, well, the ether flows did that even more. So you even had even more revealing uh, sound coming through coming through these so you really need really uh, ideally you need high quality components but thankfully even cheap components are now improving considerably in quality so I don't think you'll have any loss there if you did buy a pair of these and as I said they'll drive out of anything so the next question on people's list is how do they compare to other headphones well overall I find them to strike a really good balance between sounding spacious and detailed and intimate and engaging so for example my, one of my usual pairs of headphones is uh, the Sennheiser HD800s. Now, these have a very kind of wide sound stage, sometimes too wide for the music, so they make things sound a little bit more spacious than is really necessary. And they can be kind of bright and, and maybe a little bit too peaky for some people. I have mine recabled, uh, and I have a little bit of damping modifications inside the cups to prevent reflections and to improve the kind of uh, precision of the sound, much as the uh, ether flows do with the, their flow upgrade. Some people like that kind of damping, some people don't. Some people like them perfectly, perfectly fine stock. But for me, sometimes they do sound a bit too unengaging and a bit too diffuse. Now, the, the ether flows, on the other hand, are kind of a bit more engaging and but still maintain a lot of precision in like instrument position and, and instrument separation. So in that regard, I sometimes prefer the uh, ether flows. On the other hand, I have a pair of, with the latest version 7 drivers, a pair of old Symphones Magnums, which I've just upgraded, and they are kind of very Grado-like with with, uh, uh, this, with uh, Ryden's uh, high-quality drivers, and way back when he was making them some aluminium sleeves, which I should do a video on these sometime. These are my rocking out headphones when I really want everything up close and personal. I want that guitar right in my ears, I want them right, you know, front and center stage, I want the vocalist singing into my face, kind of Really, that's how the presentation is. It makes everything else, they make everything else sound really asleep. So that's my rocking out headphones. But the, on the other hand, the ether flows are kind of more, you know, a bit more spacious, a bit more, a bit more relaxed than that. So these, they tend to sit right between those H800s and the Symphones Magnums. Kind of right in the middle there, with just the right balance, I feel, between having that intimacy and engagement and uh, on the other hand, kind of detail and uh, spaciousness. So they're kind of dead on in the middle. And so for me, overall, they kind of, they kind of nail it in that regard. Now, the other pair of headphones, a bit out of left field, are the $3,000 Hi-Fi Man HE1000s, which like extract from all the cables and things dangling from my desk. Uh, they are another issue altogether. They're very almost electrostatic-like, which, like, which is what I was talking about before. 
And it's kind of funny because the flow upgrades came from Dan's research into making electrostatic headphones. So for these, they have a very light, airy, uh, uh, but still with very good bass, excellent bass response, but they're kind of very spacious and almost diffuse. And it's kind of funny, I ended up doing what to call, what, what we might maybe I should name the surgical tape mod. I put a bit of surgical tape inside them, something I'll talk about in a video sometime, uh, to improve the precision, reduce the reflections inside the, uh, under the head of the uh, ear pads and uh, improve the precision of them. But still, uh, they have a kind of magical presentation, which is kind of unique and kind of hard to describe compared to the ether flows. The, I wouldn't call the ether flows like clinical or analytical or anything like that. They're kind of more precise. These have, do kind of a magical, uh, uh, engaging presentation to them where the music just seems to waft your ears, but can still punch, give you a good punch when necessary, but maybe not as much as, say, uh, uh, HE6 or something like that. All the same, they're quite unique and the main downside to them, especially if you've seen Stax SR009s up close, is that uh, they're not quite as precision made as some people have hoped for $3,000. Although I think the latest V2 versions, they've improved that. They may have improved that. And so the, the head scratcher has always been with these kind of you know, $3,000. Mm, that's always been the question. And... Uh, the, the, what the kicker for me was, I waited till I, I didn't want to review them until I had a, a, the, the shit Yggdrasil arrive, and I didn't want to review them until I had an aftermarket cable to see to compare the cables as well. And once the shit Yggdrasil arrived, I was kind of, mm, these didn't scalp as much as I'd hoped. And after I recabled them, su recabled them, suddenly they did scale up, and it's like, oh, well, so this is a bit of a tricky one. I should do a whole review on, on this. But if you're, you know, I mean, the, the kind of headphones, if I was going to spend $3,000 on a pair of headphones and it wasn't a big deal for me, I'd probably go and buy Focal Utopias now. But still, they're, they're kind of magic. And so they do do some things better than the, uh, the ether flows, but, and they do have their own kind of magic that ether flows don't. But for kind of being absolutely spot on, the ether flows kind of nail it in many ways. And maybe some people will like the different presentations, different to what I do. But for me, at the moment, my number one recommended pair of high-end headphones is going to be the Ether Flows. I, Dan Clark basically bet his whole company on the Ethers. You know, he's going to give up his Fostex mods and just, just produce Ethers and Ether Cs, essentially. And I don't know if he's going to produce some headphones in the future. I guess he has other ideas. We don't know. But, and he succeeded, I think. The ethers were, were great. These are excellent. Totally recommended for me. I have real trouble even thinking of anything wrong with them. Uh, straight stock bought from, straight from his store. So that's the ether flows for you. And I thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please ask in the comments section or on HeadFi, and I'll do my best to answer.